Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is going to take the last lesson, uh, exponential functions, and we're going to stretch them, we're going to compress them, we're going to flip them over the x-axis and uh, um, move them away from the origin. So that's what this lesson's about. And don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com, and this is uh, Integrated Math 1, so this is Module 14.5. Uh, okay, and then the second uh, part of this, I'll have a Part 2. It'll help you go over some of the homework questions, you guys, so take a look at that one also, you guys. So here's our, our question. So how does um, uh, the graph of f of x equal a times b to the x change when a and b are changed? And we're also going to add a plus k on here, a constant, and it's just going to move it all around, stretch it and compress it. So we're going to change the value of b and f of x equals uh, b to the x. Now remember b can't equal 1. So it can equal anything else. It just can't equal 1. It can be negative, it can be a fraction, it can be something greater than 1. Just can't equal 1. And you're going to need a calculator for this you guys. So so complete the table uh, for the functions um, uh, f of uh, 1 of x is 1.2 to the x and then the other one's 1.5 to the x. And we're going to see what changes here. Okay so they've given us a few of the values here. They plugged in uh, x equals negative 2 right here. So you have to plug in 1.2 to the negative 2 power. And, and it, depending on which calculator you have you guys so your exponent feature will either be this y to the x button or this little, I call it a caret button, it's your exponent feature right there. So so let's try this one right here. So if we plug in uh, this base right here, 1.2, and then we hit our exponent button, the y to the x, and then we plug in negative 2 and then equals, it should give us that right there, okay? So I'm going to do the rest of that for those ones right there. You guys can do that on your own right there. And so there's the values right there. Now we're going to explore the relationship with those values here, and we're going to underline which is true. So as, uh, uh, let's see, does f of 1 or f of 2 of x increase more quickly as x increases? Okay, so here's x. x is getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Which one of these are getting bigger, bigger, bigger? It looks like f of 2 is always bigger than uh, f of 1. Okay, so definitely f of um, uh, 2 will be get bigger. And then this one says, which one approaches 0 more quickly as x decreases? So x decreasing is, means they're getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Which one's getting getting smaller faster. This one's getting smaller faster, so f of 2 again. Okay, and then it's asking what are the y-intercepts? Well, the y-intercepts are when x equals 0, so both y-intercepts are, are equal 1 right there, okay? All right, let's do that again with um, uh, this one here. Okay, here we have decimals. They're numbers that are less than 1. Remember, remember b can't be 1, but it can be a decimal between 0 and 1, so let's try this. Okay, so they've given us a couple of them here, and we just got to plug them in. I'm going to save some time. I've done those already so there those are and let's answer these questions again so which is true does f of 3 or f of 4 increase more quickly as x in uh, as I'm sorry as x decreases okay so which one increases faster it looks like this one is bigger as x decreases right there so f of 3 is bigger and then uh, which one approaches 0 more quickly as x increases? So as x increases, look at these get bigger. Which one's uh, smaller? This one is. So f of 3 again right there. Okay, so those are easy enough. And the y-intercepts are when x equals 0. So the y-intercepts are, are 1 on both of those right there. Okay, so now let's um, uh, consider the function of where b is greater than 1. Okay, so we're going to uh, consider the function y equals 1.3 to the x. And how will the graph compare with uh, the first two that we did, f of 1 and f of 2, and discuss the end behavior? Okay, so here's f of 1 and here's f of 2. So now we're going to do f of 3 right here. So um, uh, all three graphs uh, will have the same y-intercept, okay? Now we can make a table over here and plug in f of 3, but we should be able to generalize right here. f of 3 is, is going to be 1.3 is somewhere in between 1.2 to the x and 1.5 to the x. So it's going to be somewhere in between these two guys. So it's going to fall between the other two graphs. It's going to increase more quick, quickly than f of 1, but less quickly than f of 2 as x uh, goes 
goes to the right or as X increases right here and the graph falls more quickly than uh, this graph than it does from this graph as, as X decreases. Okay, so as X decreases, the numbers are getting smaller. Can you see which one's getting closer to zero? This one's getting closer to zero faster, so F of three will be getting closer to zero faster than that guy right there. It's so gonna be somewhere in between that. So now we're gonna change the value in um, uh, when B is greater than one. Okay, so when B is greater than 1, then we get what's called a vertical stretch or vertical compression. It's formed by whatever the absolute value of A is. Okay, now this is when B is greater than 1. We did some of those already. So now we're going to change A. So if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, then the, gr the graph shoots up faster. It, it, grow it goes by a factor of uh, the absolute value of A. Okay, and if it's less than 1, then the graph uh, compresses. Uh, well, I'll show you a graph of those uh, on those in just a second right well like right here so make a table of values uh, for the function given, uh, then graph it on the same graph as y equals 1.5 to the x. We already did that one. And describe the end behavior uh, and find the y-intercept of each graph. Okay, so here we're going to do 0.3 times 1.5 to the x. Okay, so there's 1.5 to the x. We already did that before right there, and there's that graph right there. Sorry, I had to do this with my finger on my little laptop, so it's a little shaky in there. I uh, wasn't uh, in school at the time, otherwise I'd have done it on my whiteboard pen on my Promethean board actually. All right, so I'm gonna plug in all these values right here. So I'm gonna do 1.5 to the negative two power and whatever that is times 0.3. Okay, so we get all of those values right there. And when we graph them, they're compressed, they're smaller. So so uh, it's it doesn't it still rises, but it rises at less of a rate right there. It still goes in the same direction. So n behavior, as x goes to positive infinity, you can either look at the graph the graph is going up, so f of x would go to positive infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, this graph gets down close to the x-axis, which is uh, f of x equals 0 right there. Okay, Or you can look at this right here. As x gets smaller, f of x gets close to 0. As x gets bigger, f of x gets larger. Okay, All right, so to infinity right there. All right, so now let's try it with uh, uh, where uh, a is negative. 2 okay all right so we already have um, that graph right there we already did that one right there so let's do so we're gonna go 1.5 to the negative 4 power and whatever that is we're gonna multiply that times negative 2 and then here 1.5 to the negative 3 power and whatever that is times negative 2 so when we do all of that that gives us those uh, points right there and see this negative reflected it over the x-axis right there okay so as as um, uh, as x gets uh, goes to infinity this direction f of x shoots down it goes to negative infinity and as x goes to negative infinity this way remember x is a left and right movement so when we're going to negative infinity this pink graph is going up towards zero right there and the y intercept is at negative two it's when x equals zero so it's going to give us at negative two right there all right so what can we say about the common behavior of the form of f of x equals a times b to the x when b is greater than one and what is the difference when the sign changes okay so all graphs of the form of a times b to the x when b is greater than one approach zero as x approaches negative infinity see how they're approaching zero right here and the sign determines the end behavior as x approaches this way so for when a is positive then we're looking at this top graph as then when x goes to infinity then it goes to infinity over here when x goes to infinity when a is negative then it goes to negative infinity right there that's what that's saying right there. Okay, all right, so now let's uh, uh, explore um, uh, when B is a fraction, somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay, so we're going to make a table of values in the function, and we're going to uh, then graph it on the same coordinate plane with uh, the graph of y equals 0.6 to the x. Okay, so we're going to uh, explore with A being some number, positive and negative, and describe the end behavior. Okay, so here's uh, this graph right here. When we Here's uh, 0.6 uh, to the x right here gets us this graph right here look as x goes to infinity 
um, then f of x goes down to 0. And as x goes to negative infinity, then f of x goes to positive infinity. That's this graph right here. This negative is going to make it flip upside down right here. Okay, So when we put those in, we're going to get those right there. So in the calculator, we push 0.6 and then our exponent feature. And then we plug in, say, negative 1. And then we multiply that times times negative 3. And that gives us that negative 5 right there. Okay, All right. So there's that graph right there, and as x goes to infinity, uh, f of x goes to 0, and as x goes to negative infinity, then f of x is shooting down to negative infinity right there, okay? That's what that says right there. And the y-intercept, of course, is when x equals 0. So remember, anything to the 0 equals 1. So this to the 0 equals 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. All right. Remember, I'm doing a homework uh, lesson in this. All right. Let's uh, in the next lesson, you guys. So don't don't feel like you're totally lost. I'll help you with your homework in part two of this. OK, so when we plug in that one here. OK, so so that point five, which is less than point six, just makes it rise up over here a little bit less. OK, so our end behavior is described right there. OK, and then uh, what can we say about the common behavior of the graphs of f of x equals a times b to the x when b is somewhere between uh, 0 and 1 and when the sign changes right there? OK, so all graphs um, approach 0 as x approaches positive infinity right here. So if I go this way, then they approach 0 right there. And when a is positive, then when we approach negative infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. And when a is negative, that's this graph right here when we go uh, x goes to negative infinity f of x goes to negative infinity remember the trick I said in the last lesson that'll help you with this also now we're going to add a constant okay so make a table of values for the function and put them together on the same coordinate plane find the y-intercepts okay so now we're going to do f of x equals 2 to the x and then we're going to do 2 to the x plus 2 that's just going to make this go up by 2 it's going to take this graph and just shift it up by 2. That's all this graph does right here. Okay, so here we go. We're going to plug in y equal 2 to the x. There it is right there. There's 2 to the x right there. Okay, and then when we do plus 2, it's just going to shift that graph up 2 units up right there. So the y-intercept of f of x equals 1. The y-intercept of g of x is uh, 3 because it's 1 plus 2. Okay, it's always everything plus 2. And so it's a vertical translation up by 2 units right there okay so let's do that with this one where we have uh, b is a fraction between 0 and 1 this minus 3 is going to take this graph and just shift it down 3 so that's all that does right there so there's that graph uh, uh, f of x right there so when we shift it down by 3 it would give us that graph right there it just went down 3 it's the same graph it's just down by 3 so the y-intercept of f of x is 1 the y-intercept of, of uh, of g of x is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Okay, so the y-intercept of g of x is is less than uh, that of f of x because it's down a vertical translation down by 3. Okay, I know it's going fast. I'll help you in the homework in the next lesson, you guys. So how do we determine the y-intercept of the exponential function uh, a times b to the x plus k? when it's both stretched and translated, okay? Well, um, the y-intercept of all parent exponential functions is uh, is 1, because you just plug in 0 right there, zero, anything to the 0 equals 1. Okay, so then we first multiply that 1 times, so this is going to be 1, 1 times whatever that is, and then add that, and that's going to be our y-intercept. So we go, so it's going. this is 1, because x equals 0, anything to the 0 equals 1, so b to the 0 equals 1, we take that, multiply it times a, and then we add k afterwards. Okay, so describe the end behavior of the translated exponential function uh, when b is greater than 1 as x approaches negative infinity. Well, that's to the left. Since all points are shifted by k, the function approaches k instead of 0. Remember, it approaches 0. Um, but it's approaching k on this one uh, because we shift it by k as x approaches negative infinity. All right, and then when... Um, uh, when uh, when b is changed right here, if b is greater than one, then it then uh, it increases. 
uh, B and makes the graph rise faster. So when A, um, when A is a positive number right there, and when B is a fraction somewhere between or decimal between 0 and 1, then it increases B by making the graph fall more gradually as X increases. All right, you guys. Now I'm going to sign this. Don't forget part two of this is going to be, uh, it's going to help you through this homework. I know that was a lot right there, but you'll see. Just get the hang of it. Don't give up on yourself. Take care, you guys.